This is a video for Unit 3 of AQA GCSE Chemistry and Combined Science, the Quantitative Chemistry Unit, and it's the first video where we're going to look at concentration. If you're taking Foundation Tier, then this is the only video that you need, but if you're sitting the higher tier papers, there's also a second video which goes into the higher tier only content. There are lots of questions included in this video so you can practice the maths, and there's a link to an accompanying worksheet in the description if you'd like more. By the end of this video, you should be confident in identifying whether a solution is dilute or concentrated and explaining why that's the case by talking about the solute and the solvent. You should be able to calculate the concentration of a solution in grams per decimeter cubed, convert volumes between centimeters cubed and decimeters cubed, and finally rearrange the concentration equation to calculate the mass of solute required to make a solution of a given concentration. Solutions have two parts. They're made up of a substance called a solute which is the thing that dissolves, say some salt or some sugar or any ionic compound you can think of, and then a solvent, which is the thing that does the dissolving, like water. By comparing the relative amounts of the solute and the solvent, we can talk about how concentrated a solution is. As we add more and more solute, the solution becomes more concentrated. As we add more and more solvent, the solution becomes more dilute or less concentrated. We're always looking at the ratio between these two components. Consider these three solutions. Which one of these is the most concentrated? Can you explain why using the words solute and solvent? The middle solution is the most concentrated. This is because it contains more solute than the other two solutions and they all are in the same fixed volume. What about these three solutions? Which one is the most concentrated? All three solutions contain the same amount of solute, but the third solution on the right hand side contains far less solvent, so the ratio between solute and solvent has decreased. This means that the right hand one is the most concentrated. What about these three solutions? Which one of these is the most concentrated and why? The solution on the right is the most concentrated. Even though the one in the middle has slightly more solute, it also has a lot more solvent, so the ratio between them is actually slightly less. Let's just check that that made sense and that you're confident using this new vocabulary. Pause the video and try to fill in these gaps. A concentrated solution contains a high mass of solute and a low volume of solvent. A dilute solution contains a low mass of solute and a high volume of solvent. About one solution being more dilute or one solution being more concentrated, but often we want a number. We need a quantitative answer and so now we need a calculation. We can calculate concentration by taking the mass of the solute and dividing it by the volume of the solvent. Now one of the things I really like about chemistry is that we have really sensible units and they often tell us what the calculation should be. The units for concentration are grams per decimeter cubed. You might not already be familiar with decimeters cubed as a unit of volume, but you've certainly heard of meters cubed and centimeters cubed, so you can probably guess that volume is measured in decimeters cubed. And you definitely know that mass is measured in grams. So if you have the units for concentration, and if you know that that slash or per sign is really a divide sign, then the units tell you what the calculation you need to do is. Let's look at another one of these solutions. Now let's say that these solute particles are really heavy and they weigh 10 grams each. So I've got a total mass of 30 grams of solute. And let's say that this box contains six decimeters cubed of liquid. So to calculate my concentration, I do 30 grams divided by six decimeters cubed, which would give me an answer of five grams per decimeters cubed. If I had a box that was twice the size, but still had the same amount of solute dissolved in it, then my concentration would be 30 grams divided by 12 decimeters cubed, which would give me a concentration of 2.5 grams per decimeters cubed. So by doubling the volume, I've halved the concentration. Hopefully that made sense, so you can now pause the video and have a go at some of these calculations for yourself. 
Remember, each time you're dividing the mass by the volume. So 1000 grams divided by 10 decimeters cubed gives me a concentration of 100 grams per decimeter cubed. Then 4000 divided by 20 gives me 200. 50 divided by 20 gives me 2.5. 640 divided by 8 gives me 80. 3000 divided by 12 gives me 250. 500 divided by 1.25 gives me 400. 2000 divided by 0.5 gives me 4000. 3000 divided by 1.2 gives me 2500. 1440 divided by 120 gives me 12. And 36,000 divided by 12 gives me 3000 grams per decimeter cubed. If you'd like to do some more practice, then there's a link to the worksheet in the description below. It's possible or even likely that you haven't encountered decimeters cubed before, but now you need to be able to use them and you need to be able to convert back and forth between decimeters cubed and centimeters cubed, and sometimes even meters cubed as well. This is particularly important if you're taking GCSE chemistry or triple science and you're going to go on and learn about titration. So here is a decimeter. It's a unit of length and it's equivalent to a tenth of a metre, because des or dec always means ten, as in decimate or decade. So as you can see here, one decimeter is a tenth of a metre, and that's equivalent to ten centimetres. Now if you imagine a cube, and every length of that cube is one decimeter, the volume of that cube we would find by multiplying those lengths together to give us one decimeter cubed. This is actually the same thing as a litre, it's just our proper standard international unit way of saying it. Now, if instead of writing those lengths as one decimeter, I'd written them as 10 centimeters, which means exactly the same thing, then I would then calculate the volume as 10 times 10 times 10, which would give me a thousand centimeters cubed. So this tells me there are a thousand centimeters cubed in one decimeter cubed, and incidentally, there are a thousand decimeters cubed in one meter cubed. Now this may sound slightly silly, but I always think that something that helps you to get the marks in the exam is not silly, however it feels. So whenever I have to do a conversion like this, I start out by writing down in my margin 1000 centimeters cubed is one decimeter cubed. And then I draw an arrow that goes from one to the other. And I think to myself, what have I done to this number to move along the arrow? So to change centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed, I've divided by a thousand. Once I've established that, I'm ready to do some conversions. So 5,000 centimetres cubed divided by 1,000 is 5 decimetres cubed. Pause the video and have a go at the other 9 yourself. So 2,000 centimetres cubed is 2 decimetres cubed. 3,500 is 3.5 decimetres cubed. 600 centimetres cubed is 0.6 decimetres cubed. 400 centimetres cubed is 0.4 decimetres cubed. 75 centimetres cubed is 0.075 decimeters cubed. 22 centimeters cubed is 0.022 decimeters cubed. 12,000 centimeters cubed is 12 decimeters cubed. 450 centimeters cubed is 0.45 decimeters cubed. And 225 centimeters cubed is 0.225 decimeters cubed. The other thing you need to remember is that in order for us to report the concentration in grams per decimeter cubed, the mass needs to be in grams. So if you're given a mass in kilograms, remember that there are 1000 grams for every kilogram. For each one of these concentration calculations, before you do the calculation, check that the mass is in grams and the volume is in decimeters cubed. So for instance, for this first one, 1.25 kilograms is 1250 grams and 2,500 centimetres cubed is 2.5 decimetres cubed. So then 1,250 divided by 2.5 gives me an answer of 500 grams per decimetre cubed. Pause the video and have a go at the rest of them now. So with a bit of luck, you've got 500 grams per decimetre cubed, 540, 1,100, 300, 2,000, 50, 5,000, 250, and 1,600. The next step is to rearrange this equation so we can work out what mass of solute is required in order to make a certain volume of a solution of a certain concentration. So right now mass is divided by volume and we want to get rid of that divide by volume. So the way that we get rid of something from a mathematical equation is to do the inverse operation. 
Right now we're dividing by volume, so we need to times both sides of the equation by volume. So we get left with mass being volume multiplied by concentration. So how much solute is required to make 0.75 decimeters cubed of 120 grams per decimeter cubed solution? Well, I can rewrite my rearranged equation and then I can multiply the concentration, which is 120, by the volume, which is 0.75. And that gives me a final answer of 90. Now, of course, because this is a mass, it needs to be in grams. Sometimes the volume won't be in decimeters cubed, so we're going to need to convert before we start. Here, we're asked to make 600 centimeters cubed of 140 gram per decimeter cubed solution. You need to know that 600 centimeters cubed is the same thing as 0.6 decimeters cubed. So my formula remains the same, and now I'm doing 140 times 0.6, which is 84, and because it's a mass, it must be in grams. Time for you to have a go. How much mass is required to make each of these solutions? Pause the video and write down your answers, and then we'll go through them. To make 500 centimetres cubed of a 200 gram per decimeter cubed solution, we need to do 400 multiplied by 0.5 because the volume needs to be in decimeters cubed. This gives us an answer of 200 grams. For question number two, you should have an answer of 17.5. For question number three, 64 grams. For question number four, 72 grams. And for question number five, 69 grams. If you're taking the foundation tier, then that's everything that you need to know about concentration. If you're taking higher tier, then watch out for the next video where we'll look at concentration in terms of moles per decimeter cubed. Thank you very much for watching, and if you did find it useful, don't forget to like and subscribe.